Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Ingun Boll and I'm the founder and president of the Female Wave of Change. And I'm here today with my sister board member, Dr. Lunka Manelli from South Africa and our very special guest and our global ambassador, Bisila Bokoko. Bisila, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and um, give the Female Wave of Change community the opportunity to tap into your wisdom, your knowledge, and your experience. So we have a couple of questions for you. So before we start, can you share us a little bit about your background and especially what you've been doing for the last year and a half since the world was shaken up by the pandemic? You bet, it's been shaking up all of us. <laughs> Well, I mean, my background is to be in business. I've been always helping business to move from local to global. This is my background in international business, helping corporations uh, to make business in the United States. Eventually, people started to ask me to help them to go to Latin America and to Africa. So this has been what I've been doing. And I've been an ambassador also for several brands, particularly fashion or culture. and. I've been always a woman advocate. I collaborate with the UNTAC, with Empretec, to a program to promote entrepreneurship about, among women in order for them to have a way to really achieve what is financial freedom, which is, I think, the key point for us to make decisions about where and how we want to live our lives. So this is basically my background. And the last year and a half has been a learning curve. And I was so used to, um, address audiences uh, because I also am a speaker and I have to rethink the whole thing and it was very challenging for me because from one day on another all my projects everything fell down and I had to rethink and reimagine what is next in my life so for me it has been a reinvention process but technology thanks for that I was able to communicate and continue to work in um, helping women around the world through zoom calls to teams calls and everything so uh, i think it was a matter to be flexible and adaptable because this is we live in uncertainty times mm -hmm. and this was absolutely a must to just be flexible so that's basically what i've been doing mm -hmm. and you have projects all over the world so can you share a little bit about the projects and and how you have been able to cope with it to, in the last year and a half well, there is one of the projects that is going to take me to Kenya, which I was involved in. It is to make a center for um, professional, um, help women to just get different professions. Not every person wants to be in college, but people definitely should learn a profession. So we were doing a school in Masai Mara, helping women who really are far away from the whole world and just giving them a hand. So that's also the reason why I will be going to Kenya. But still, we were able to, to work remotely and trying to think about what is the best ways and programs to do. I'm also creating a textile uh, and confection classes for women in Equatorial Guinea to promote women who want to do fashion. I've been working also with another project with a lady in Spain called Leticia Valera to also empower women in Senegal, creating um, a line of African bags and um, it's just trying to, to figure it out ways. The challenge was the logistics, because even if you create product, products or trying to do something with all of the issues that were going around the world, it was very challenging. But we have been working with other women who really nothing could block them and stop them <laughs> and they still go and do it. Mm -hmm. And I think this was also for me very um, inspirational because they said, no, no, let's keep going. There's not a stop, we should do it. And I think this encouragement from our women, and I think that is so beautiful when women team up to just create a project and do it together. Because maybe when I feel that I couldn't make it or I feel down, someone is there to lift me up and say, no, no, we could do this. So I think this was a, a beautiful experience and this is one of the projects and we continue also with the UNTACT and we were able to continue helping different women in developing countries to create entrepreneurship programs. And we did this remotely through mentorship, trying to um, help them to figure it out what's next and to create these entrepreneurship projects because a lot of people have great ideas but the problem is how do you 
make these ideas land. Mm -hmm. And I think to execute the idea is always the challenge. And sometimes we don't have the knowledge. And I, I think it's good to rely on other people who could give you some tips about a bookkeeping or you know, how to hire people or what is the legal framework that the product might need. So all of these things has been really keeping me very busy. <laughs> I hear and is I hear you say you know just keep going and you know that energy that would would women would pick pick you up and just is this one of your biggest lessons from the pandemic? I think so because sometimes entrepreneurs we have a tendency to work isolated from each other and it's I think it's a very lonely journey and the same thing for executive women when you are in a board of directors and you are the only women. I've been talking today with a woman who is in the gaming industry and she was telling me how lonely she felt and how hard it was for her being always the only woman in the room because in the gaming industry, she said women play video games too, but there were not so many women who really write these video games or they develop these video games and she's alone in that. So I think that we have this kind of tendency sometimes to believe that we could do everything alone and we get depleted of energy. So I think it's so good to, to just team up. And for me, Female Wave of Change also has been this source of energy because any day I get up in the morning and I see the messages of so many women just moving forward, keep mm -hmm. doing and inspiring, inspiring all of us. So I think it's very important to have that kind of um, circle that really, really holds you when sometimes you feel that is that you couldn't do it. All of us, we have these moments and I think it's good to, to just have somebody to rely on and be vulnerable, give yourself permission mm -hmm. to be vulnerable. Because also another thing that women, we have a tendency to do is to feel ashamed if we're not strong enough. <laughs> we don't have to be strong all the time. We don't have to be super women all the time. It's okay to lose our kites and don't fly anymore when you cannot. And I think it's good that someone is there to just give you a hack and say, you know what, it's okay. You feel this way, but let's keep going. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. great. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Um, Basila, and the last couple of years, you know, we, we have been focused on themes like women leading in change and women leading to accelerate change. To accelerate change. Is this something you have been, uh, you have seen happening? Are women coming to the fore in leading the change on various parts of life, especially in the field of business and, and entrepreneurship? Yeah, I'm absolutely very happy with what I have seen. I've been in business around 21 years and the framework has changed, the landscape has changed. But the most beautiful thing is that I think that women are more confident to really take these positions before they refuse to take these positions because sometimes even if they had the opportunity, uh, they didn't feel that they were good enough to do it. And I think that because we have right now so many reference points and people to look up to. And I think that women are feeling, yes, if she can do it, I could do it. And I think in business also, the conciliation between your personal life and your professional life is another thing that I, I, I love to watch that more women, um, they are okay. Um, having a family and being and just business people and, and, and they can manage this in a better way. So there is changes. Mm -hmm. Wow. So since the start of the pandemic, which has hit us uh, heavily, we have done uh, most of our activities on global level as the female wolf change um, to be able to support and reach out to many women and families uh, uh, online as much as, as possible and, and also focus on reshaping the future. This year we have decided to move things more locally where we need to think global but have to act locally. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I think it's a brilliant idea and I think it's a brilliant approach because we have realized that yes, it's great to operate in a global uh, arena but you could not forget that everything starts local and from local to global is much easier than from global to local. And we could not forget that our resources are in a place that we live and where we are, and we need to really enhance them before we go farther. And I think it's good that people really join forces in the locals and they understand that whatever they do, it has to impact first, firstly 
your local market, your local um, framework before you go further in the world. And also because the tendency right now with globalization and everything is that mm -hmm. the world is going to a direction that is also forcing us to go more local. So why to go against the current? <laughs> because we all seen it how a lot of problems we need to solve in a local level before we go to solve them in the global level. So we all have to be responsible of what is happening around us in our places before even we go further. So I think it's a great perspective without, of course, understanding that everything that you do local, thanks to technology, is going to be seen all over the world. Yeah. But I think it's good that we try to thrive locally, that we join forces locally, and whatever we do, that it has also an impact in our local places. Wow. So now um, on the September the 24th and 25th, we have our next global conference, um, a wave of change around the world where we will be visiting most of the countries where we are represented um, to hear about the challenges and opportunities for women. How important do you think it is for women around the globe to join us at this conference? Well, I think it's essential because whatever is going out out there affect us also. And I think that women will really need to create this wave of change all over the place, even if we are locally. So I think that to, to listen to other people's stories is the, the key for success in life. Mm -hmm. How many people just, we went to a conference and we watch a movie, something and that's changed our lives. But here you're listening to the stories for real. It's not fabricated stories. It's women who are giving their opinion about what's going on in the markets mm -hmm. and what is going on in their countries and in the rural areas that they live. And I think this group particularly is very unique. Um, I have seen different conferences in the last two, three years, and the feedback is always fantastic. And when we were able to do in presence, um, the, the feedback, it was always incredible. And so many people told me, you know, this changed me. This kind of network has been so essential in my life. So I think that we could not use the excuse that this year we could not meet do not dedicate that time to really, really see what's going on because we are all in progress. We are all trying to learn how to live the new normal. And I think this, this is an special and essential meeting to attend. And I will encourage every woman to just dedicate that two days to really just connect with us to, to they are our sisters. And this sisterhood is really, if we want to change the 21st century, and all of these stories that are going around depend on us. I think that we could not afford not to be part of the table. And this is the right table to be. Wow. wow. Ingrid, do you have more questions? Well, that sounds fantastic. You know, this is the uh, right, right wow. table to be. And the thing that I've always learned, you know, if, if you're not at the table, you know, bring your own chair. But there's also, if you're not at the table, create your own table. And I think that is what we have been doing for the past five years and uh, I love what you're saying and I really do uh, believe that that women leading in change that you can see the changes there has been a lot happening and especially in a time of crisis you see women getting on their feet uh, connecting with each other uh, and really uh, with confidence what you what you were saying they get more confidence this yeah. is our time we really have to make that difference and uh, I love that. We need those role models. We need those people to look up to. And you're definitely one of them. So thank you for that. Um, and also your local project. You know, you can see that what you are doing, you're not only operating on a global level and sharing your vision on a global level, what you're doing for us as well, but also acting, act, really acting on that local level. And love what you're doing in, in Kenya. And actually, one of the our Kenya group, uh, which is quite big, really fantastic team that we have there, they will be uh, addressing a, a major topic uh, during the conference, and that is uh, a world without uh, FMG uh, female genet FGM <laughs> female genital mutation. Genital mutation. Yes. yes. And actually, one of the uh, ladies that is really dedicated to make that happen is one of the ladies from the Masai Mara tribe. So oh. 
fantastic. So I see all these connections in it again. So I really do believe that uh, that you're right. People need to join us on the 24th and the 25th of, uh, of September. And uh, yes, it's, it, there's no way that you cannot be there. There's, there will be a lot of stories. And, and I do believe that stories, the stories matter, but stories also give hope and really open people up to uh, the next step that they can make. So um, that's it for me. I really want to thank you again for sharing your vision, your wisdom, your knowledge, experience. Uh, we love to hear more, but for now, you know, let's use these wise words uh, to, uh, to attract uh, a lot of women to, uh, and men, they're also welcome to our conference on the 24th and the 25th.